Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our interview with Greg Goodwin. Greg is the co-founder and chief product and strategy officer at Cyvatar.ai, uh, which is a cybersecurity startup building a platform that offers a membership-based model for cybersecurity as a service. Greg, thank you for coming to our interview today. Uh, it's great to be here, Boris. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So I believe that uh, with your background, we will have a very thoughtful conversation about uh, cybersecurity as a whole and specifically what challenges you guys uh, uh, serve in and how you help uh, people in the market. And uh, could you perhaps uh, tell us a short story about uh, your path in the in cybersecurity industry and what you have been up to these days? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. So um, like I say, great to be here. My I've had a long career, Boris, in, in cybersecurity. Um, I started out um, with the government, with the UK government back in the day where I got my background in, in cybersecurity and intelligence. Um, and then I fell out of that when chief security officer was, was just becoming a thing in the market, really. Um, I started to build kind of gradually larger scale cybersecurity functions for mainly US-based technology companies. So uh, Monster Worldwide, a big, big online recruiter back in the day, um, Ferguson PLC, a big plumbing and heating group, um, CDK Global, big automotive tech firm. Um, and then finally Fujitsu before co-founding uh, Cybertar with, with my co-founder, Corey White. Um, so spent you know 18 or so years building, operating, running, large scale cybersecurity functions and businesses globally, um, which gives you a really unique um, end user perspective on the way the industry operates. I think, um, you know, a lot of founders come from a serial entrepreneurs type background where they've been very focused on the vendor side. But I think the luxury that I've got is that I've been on that customer side for my entire career. So I know what it feels like to try and solve those cybersecurity problems. Um, and I know what it feels like to be on the receiving end of all the vendor marketing and the, the broken promises and all that kind of stuff that you get in the industry. So, so I think, you know, I was in a unique position to, to help Corey to build Cybertar and, and build the model that we've built today. So that's a bit about my background. And then two years ago, me and Corey got together realized that the industry was really broken and, and just wasn't delivering the outcomes that customer needed. So, so that's when we started on this journey to, to building what we built today with Cybertar. Wow, interesting. So tell me, because there are so many uh, solutions for the cybersecurity issues and why there is a need for your solution and perhaps what is the aha moment for you was to, oh, I, I have to build this uh, solution for, for myself. Yeah, well, um, I think, you know, like I said, 18 years of trying to deliver um, what we would say is real outcomes from our security products and services. You know, over those 18 years, I'd purchased pretty much every tool that was available on the market. I'd consumed every service that was available over the course of my career. But what I still found was that as an end user, I needed internal resources on top of that or... I needed to build my own technology internally. And none of these vendors, solutions or products were actually getting me to the outcome, which is to be more secure, right? The ultimate goal is to be more secure or to reduce risk. Um, and none of those products were doing that. They were just pointing out my problems. And in fact, in most cases, all of those products that I bought were giving me more things to do, not less. So you know, over the course of that time, and I, I came to the realization when I talked to Corey about what he wanted to build, you know, actually, we need to drive something really different in the industry. The industry needs to approach getting secure really differently, because we're not giving a holistic outcome for our customers right now. Um, and what we realized was we didn't need to build another product to add to the four and a half thousand. We needed to build a different business model, right? And like you said in the introduction, what we therefore set out to do and have done now is bring the membership economy to cybersecurity, bring effortless ability for customers to consume the output of cybersecurity, the output of secure, rather than 
have to fight with a million different products and a million different services to get there at a ridiculous cost point. We always use like the example of a Netflix, right? Many years ago, you'd have to go and buy a DVD, buy a DVD player, put it in. <laughs> it would all be physical in nature. And that's kind of an analogy for how we cobble together our cybersecurity programs right now. What we've done is create the Netflix, right? The ability to just consume on demand at a reasonable cost price and really, really quickly, the outcome of security, just the way that Netflix allows you to consume the outcome of media without all of the pain in the middle. Mm. So it's kind of a service uh, software, a service, uh, right? Because it's kind of a popular model now uh, because I interview a lot of uh, uh, founders and they all say that there is in SaaS business but what a uh, unique point of view you said that you have kind of a membership model is it uh, not the same as a uh, SaaS model it's very similar to the SaaS model right because you're consuming an outcome rather than needing to build the constituent parts the reason we say membership is because becoming a membership of Cybertar, becoming a member of Cybertar gives you real value above and beyond just buying a individual product, right? If you buy an individual product, you don't get the wrappers around, which are, you know, the services that are included within our subscriptions, the ability to learn from other members, the collective gain of being part of a community. And the key thing about being a member of a community or a member of something is that every single one of those members contributes in some way. And what our model allows to do is that as we're learning from each of our members, the value in the membership for the collective group gets higher and higher over time. So everyone interacting on the same platform, everyone utilizing the same solutions and interacting and, and um, receiving that outcome of security makes the community as a whole more valuable, which is really important for us. And it means that not only is one individual getting more secure, but as they get more secure, we learn as a collective community and we pass that around, those learnings around to make the whole membership group, the whole community of Cybertar members more secure. Mm. Interesting, because uh, when you have... Uh kind of a security issue, probably you last, uh, from my point of view, last thing you want to share that uh, with your colleagues that you had this uh, issue, maybe as an, an anonymous person, but uh, I'm wondering how it works. It's kind of blog or forum? Or... Well, think, think about it less as an individual vulnerability, right? So what, what the key thing that's been missing, and it's crazy because Bruce Schneier said this over 20 years ago, right? Security is a process ultimately. It's not a product and it's not a service, it's a process. So actually it's less about an individual vulnerability and more about us learning about the right process to go through to secure or protect an organization, right? And what we've done as a fundamental part of our business model is build the process for security in each of our constituent solutions. So as we build and mature those processes, it means that we get quicker, faster ROI and business outcomes for our customers because we're learning collectively as a group. So it's less about you know, intelligence sharing and sharing when someone's been breached or not been breached. It's much more about proactively understanding the best way to achieve security before those inevitable breaches or vulnerabilities actually happen. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if somebody who is listening to this epi episode and he wants to, he is very worried about ransomware and uh, he is uh, cybersecurity issues in general, what uh, first first thing that he, he, he or she should take action on from your perspective? Well, number one, and I, I've been doing this for 20 years, number one is always focusing on the, the basics of protecting your organization. You know, it's a, it's a bit of a running joke amongst even large company chief security officers. When you get them in a group and someone mentions something like, you know, IT asset management, which CIS has as number one most important thing, the first thing you should do. And yet most companies don't know what assets they've got or where they are, right? It's just one of these things. I think we've 
kind of realize that now. Um, so I think the basics has got to be the real focus. And if you look at what we're doing at Cybertar, mostly for our small to medium sized customers, we build them a roadmap or journey based on what their maturity is. And that roadmap or journey looks like, you know, knowing what you've got, where you've got it, and then ultimately protecting the main constituent parts and doing the basics well. So as part of step number one on our journey, if you've got nothing, threat and vulnerability management is absolutely key, right? Making sure patching is done, making sure basic hygiene is done on all your systems. It's not difficult stuff. It's difficult if you don't know how to do it, right? And then getting things into a locked down preventative state. Too many companies, and in fact, this is part of the problem with the security industry, the security industry makes money out of the insecurity of customers, right? We ultimately mostly wait until someone gets breached and then we make money off the fact that everyone's panicking. Not many people focus on the proactive side, which is where Cybertar does its best work, right? Which is, here's your roadmap or journey. Here's the basics you should put in place. We install, configure, and remediate everything before time so that ultimately you're in the strongest position from a risk point of view to hold your own. Now, of course, no one can guarantee 100% of anything, but getting the systems into a preventative state, doing the basic hygiene, rolling out good preventative endpoint protection means that you've got those basic building blocks in place. And we know the way that some of these ransomware um, uh, attackers operate right they look for that low hanging fruit um, and, and ultimately if you're doing good hygiene good patching good threat and vulnerability management and good endpoint management you're going to stand yourself in in really good stead the other thing that we do as part of all of those solutions we call it our gold package right which is the starter package um, it's easy to consume it's quick and we also now wrap it with an assurance guarantee which means if touch wood anything was to happen, you're covered against the costs of recovering from that ransomware. So all of that wrapped into a neat little bundle. It's not about boiling the ocean. It's not about gold plated. <laughs> it's about doing the basics really well so that you're ultimately in a good risk position. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So I want to hear your personal opinion. For example, what is a commonly held belief or misconception in the cybersecurity field that you kind of strongly disagree with? Wow, that's a, that's a tough one. Um, I think uh, one of the things we've been talking about today actually is, uh, is the concept of talent shortage, right? I think for me, the talent shortage in the cybersecurity industry is a bit of a misnomer, right? I think people are going to market and looking for, you know, um, excessive things when they look for cybersecurity experts. You know, they're going to market and saying, I want 15, 20 years experience in cybersecurity. Well, we all know that, you know, it's perhaps been around that long, but not much longer. So finding people that have got 15 or 20 years is going to be a tough ask. So no wonder there's a talent shortage when you're asking for those kinds of mm -hmm. credentials. I think what we need to do more as an industry is look to younger people. We need to look to people who want to break into the industry and people who have skills wider. You know, I think risk and compliance is a great example. There's been a definite trend in financial risk professionals moving into cybersecurity and senior cybersecurity roles, which I think is a great thing, you know, taking people that have got business capability and business experience, because ultimately we think we're special in cybersecurity, but actually, you know, it's a business discipline at the end of the day. And someone who's got those kind of transferable skills would be incredibly good at making those tough risk-based decisions that a security professional needs to make. So I think we need to focus on training. We need to focus people who are interested in coming into the industry and we need to look at transferable skills elsewhere. And I think we'll find that, you know, the talent is out there if you look in those different places. Mm. So uh, well, I wonder, because you, you said you worked as a CISO, you worked on, uh, in the trenches for about 18 years and now you started uh, your own company. So uh, Tell me, how, how did your per perspective change uh, when you shifted from being uh, uh, working for somebody in the big organization just and uh, running now uh, your own uh, small company? Yeah, it's, 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 it's fantastic to do so, actually. I kind of wish, I, wish I'd done it sooner. Um, Corey says I've moved to the dark side now. So, you know, whatever I get, I'm not invited to the CISO parties anymore that I used to get invited <laughs> to. You're a vendor um, now. 
Yeah, yeah. But but other than that, um, you know, I, I think it's fantastic. I think you know, I what I've brought to this, which I think is 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 a real kind of the value that I bring is, as you said, the the end user perspective. Kind of been there, done it. I know the pain of the end customer. Um, and I think you know, coming into Cybertar, building Cybertar, what it's done is given me the unique opportunity to really change an industry and and take a step back and see how we really solve the problems. Um, I think you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't say this for everyone, but I think there are you know a lot of entrepreneurial type individuals who are very much focused on building stakeholder value, you know, at, at the expense of the customer or at the expense of the product that they're building. Ultimately, it's about the best marketing, the best fear, uncertainty and doubt to raise the valuation in the business. Now, of course, you have to play that game to some extent. And we're getting funded. We've got stakeholders. We've got a board. But me and Corey are maniacally focused on making sure that we deliver to the CISOs, right? Making sure that we deliver to the end customer. And if we're not doing that, then we see that as a failure. And, and I think, you know, me having that unique perspective and been there and done that means that over the years, as we're building Cybertar and as we change the way the industry consumes cybersecurity, we'll always keep that real strong focus on making sure that we're sticking true to those goals and, and delivering outcomes that customers want. Um, and I, I just feel, incredibly lucky to to you know have received the funding that we've got to have the rocket ship taken off um to coin a bit of a cliche for customers to have been joining us on the journey and more members every day joining us on the journey and i think you know together it, it will change the way the industry works people will see that there's more value in in the way that we're delivering cyber security services um, and, and that will ultimately change the way that everyone has to deliver their services too. So, so I'm super hopeful. Um, I'm really proud of what we've achieved so far, um, but really looking forward to doing more and more over the coming years. Yeah, fantastic. So uh, because uh, these CISOs are probably much uh, most uh, difficult persons to attract as a uh, customers uh, like from marketing perspective because everybody wants to uh, to bombard them with a proposal so what uh, your kind of um, strategy for penetrating the market uh, and uh, going uh, in front of uh, uh, users because you have a network of already uh, of this uh, people or the specific uh, strategy i'm interested to know yeah, well, well, actually, um, slightly different. So our, our main target audience right now is probably not the CISOs, to be honest. Now, we've got, we've got a ton of customers who are CISOs. You know, they see the value in the model. Um, but for sure, right now, a lot of our customers are in that position where they're in a scale-up phase. You know, they haven't yet hired a CISO or just have their first CISO in the seat. Um, we all know what that's like, being in that position. And you're not going to get the world of budget. Like you're not going to get, you know, um, another 10 heads or another 10 people. Um, and when you're starting a greenfield security function like that, the Cybertar cybersecurity as a service model is quite frankly, just a no brainer. Like the return on investment associated with the way that we're delivering solutions because we're wrapping products and services into a subscription that is cancel anytime, where you get that added benefit of membership, you're not having to make a five-year investment in a single tool that the, mm -hmm. you're then stuck with, right? You're getting a flexible subscription that delivers you real outcomes. And, and who's going to argue, right? If you say, you don't say, I want this product versus product two, you say, I want threat and vulnerability management as a program. Yeah, of course you do. Regardless of the products or solutions that are being used to achieve it, you're paying for that outcome. So, so for those small to medium sized businesses, you know, a thousand people or smaller, where they haven't quite got a CISO yet, you know, it's the CTO struggling with what he should do about security and risk. Well, we're the go to one stop shop for cyber security for those people. So, so that's kind of where we're focusing. And then on the CISO side, the bigger end um, for those customers, what we're helping them to do is really take away the commoditized stuff in security. I think most security people would agree that things like you know, endpoint security management, threat and vulnerability management, they're relatively commoditized now. They're hard to do because it's a big task and it takes a long time and it's expensive because of the tools. 
we make it cheaper, we make it faster because we take that pain away. And for those CISOs that have got an internal team, that means that their expensive internal resources can be spent doing the stuff that we wouldn't do, right? Like the hard internally developed applications, like the communicating with the board, like that hard stuff that the internal security team need internal knowledge for. And we take away the pain of the blocking and tackling and the day-to-day -day stuff for them. So, so that's kind of how we're differentiating in the market. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have this question that all of my guests, uh, because I'm running Global Risk Community, a uh, community of approximately in total 100,000 um, professionals all over the world. I'm, I wonder, what do you think, how can we contribute uh, for, to better understanding of this uh, complex world of risk uh, for our audience? Yeah, I, I think like, I, lo I love the process of risk. I think risk is not talked about enough from a cyber security perspective i've always taken a very risk-based approach to my security programs um i think you know number one for me i come from an intelligence background would be sharing right and i know we mentioned it early on sometimes people don't like sharing technical vulnerabilities and that kind of stuff but sharing of processes right it can be a really lonely job as a CISO in an organization like you're you're, you're leading a security organization you know you have this kind of um, propensity to keep stuff to yourself as a security professional. And we don't often share enough. So, you know, I would always encourage people, particularly with 100,000 people, congratulations on that, by the way, that's a huge audience. Um, I think, you know, to, to have that kind of audience and have that kind of collective power as a community, to be able to share those real best practices, like what's worked for you, what hasn't worked. I'm a huge fan of sharing those successful processes and the things that haven't worked as well, right? Because I'll learn from them as Craig, but we need everyone to learn from them. Like, you don't need to make that mistake again. This is what worked. This is what better works. This is what didn't work for me. So I, I think number one for me would just be that communication, that sharing, sharing processes and making sure that the community gets better as a whole. Because we're all learning. It's a relatively new subject. Um, so let's keep learning on it. Okay. So uh, finalize, if, uh, finalizing, if um, some, someone uh, listening to this interview would like to walk away with one or two major uh, points, uh, what, what, what would that be? Um, I would say, you know, focus on the basics, um, you know, focus on building your, your IT assets and understanding what you've got and where. You know, focus on really doubling down on the basics. It's not a bad thing to be building your basics up and going back to fortifying a business from the real basic building blocks of something like CIS. Secondly, I would say, you know, come and learn about the Cybertar model. I think, you know, we're really changing the way that the industry is doing and consuming cybersecurity. Um, it's not just another product. It truly is a new business model. We're bringing the membership economy to cybersecurity. Um, and we're always looking for people to help us at the end of the day, not just be members or not just be customers, right? This is about a community helping a community. We've got a large advisory board of CISOs and risk professionals and business professionals that help us to build this. So, you know, we'd love to show people what we're doing and, and have the collective community contribute to, to building the right way of delivering cybersecurity. That means that everyone gets more secure. All right. Maybe one uh, more question. Uh, we have uh, some, a few minutes. So where do you think this all uh, cybersecurity branch uh, as a whole is heading? And what are the trends in this space? Uh, and what should we expect from you guys in the future? Yeah, so I think my, my, uh, my favorite topic over the last six months or so has been around the decentralization of security, right? In, in my opinion, the kind of middle cybersecurity function, the group cybersecurity function, um, the central function um, becomes more and more dispersed over time, right? I think the most successful I've ever been in security roles is by giving the responsibility to the other parts of the business. And we're seeing that in some of the commercialization of the security products as well. You know, companies are focusing their tools on developers, not the security team, or they're focusing their tools on IT, not the, not the security team. So putting security in the hands of the business users and empowering them to do the right thing um, is, is where it is heading. And, and ultimately then, 
the security team and the risk team become oversight, right? They don't operate the functions. And I think that will continue to happen. That will continue to move on. What we've done with CyberTower, and this is where I think our business is going, is enable that with our platform, right? Having that centralized platform to see the single pane of glass for your security program enables you to disperse the security responsibility to the various parts of the business, but still have a retained amount of control, still have oversight of what the business is doing, but at the same time, empower them to do the right thing. So I think decentralized security, empowering other parts of the business to be secure for themselves is ultimately where our industry goes. And CISOs and security professionals should focus on empowering the rest of the business with the knowledge and the tools to drive security by design. Right. Thank you, Craig, for this uh, insightful interview. And I hope uh, that it will be useful for our uh, members and listeners. And I wish you success and growing your company, Cybertar. And probably we can uh, discuss in a few months uh, uh, progress, uh, something new from you, from your side. Sounds fantastic. Thanks for having me, Boris. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you.